What if the world's oldest genetic story wasn't buried in African deserts or hidden in the ruins of ancient Mesopotamia, but quietly pulsing in the blood of modern-day Cambodians? In 2012, archaeologists uncovered a single human skeleton in a dusty tomb at Angkor Boreai, and its DNA told a story no one expected. Not only was it ancient, it was unexpected. Nearly half of her ancestry pointed to South India, from a time when written history was still in its infancy. But this is only one piece of a deeper mystery. Because Cambodian DNA doesn't just tell one story, it tells many. Stories of Ice Age survivors, Neolithic farmers, forgotten kingdoms, and migrations that crossed oceans long before maps were drawn. This isn't mythology. This is science, and it's rewriting everything we thought we knew about where Cambodians come from, and what their DNA reveals about all of us. Long before temples rose from the jungle and kingdoms carved their names into stone, Cambodia was already alive, not with empire, but with endurance. Deep within the DNA of modern Cambodians lies a signature that stretches back more than 50,000 years to some of the earliest humans who ever set foot in Southeast Asia. These weren't farmers or builders. They were hunter-gatherers, known today through a culture archaeologists call the Hoabinian. They left no written language, but their legacy lives on, in the bones of ancient graves and in the unbroken maternal lines passed from mother to child over thousands of generations. Modern genetic studies have revealed that Cambodians carry mitochondrial haplogroups like M59, M69, and M78 that are not just rare, but ancient. These lineages are direct echoes of humanity's earliest migration out of Africa. They've survived ice ages, floods, plagues, and wars, quietly traveling through time in the blood of a people who never forgot the land they called home. And what's remarkable is this. Even after waves of migration, conquest, and cultural change, these ancient lineages remain dominant in Cambodia's rural regions. They weren't erased by time. They were anchored by it. Cambodia didn't just inherit ancient DNA. It preserved it. If your DNA held secrets from before recorded history, would you want to know? Thousands of years after the first hunter-gatherers shaped Cambodia's genetic foundation, a new chapter began, not with conquest, but with quiet transformation. Around 4,000 years ago, migrants from southern China began moving southward. They brought rice, livestock, pottery, and an entirely new way of life. These were the early Austroasiatic speakers and their arrival would forever reshape the DNA of Southeast Asia. But here's what makes Cambodia's story unique. The newcomers didn't erase the past. They wove themselves into it. Instead of replacing the Hoabinian people, they merged with them. Over generations, their genes, languages, and cultures fused, creating something entirely new. A population that looked forward, but still carried the deep memory of what came before. Today, Modern Cambodians are living evidence of that fusion. Their genetic profiles show a blend of ancient hunter-gatherer ancestry and Neolithic East Asian DNA. And that blend isn't shallow. It's rich, complex, and regionally distinct. In the countryside, ancient signatures dominate. In cities, the mix is deeper. But everywhere, the story remains the same. Cambodia didn't forget its roots. It adapted and survived. Can two entirely different civilizations meet and become one, not through conquest, but through connection? In 2012, deep in the ruins of Angkor Boreai, archaeologists uncovered a human skeleton from the 1st to 3rd century C, long before the rise of the Angkor Empire. At first glance, it was a typical burial, offerings, posture, placement. But when scientists sequenced her DNA, they were stunned. Nearly half of her ancestry, 42 to 49 percent, traced directly to South India. This wasn't just a case of shared ancient roots. This was recent, direct genetic mixing, likely during the early days of the Funan Kingdom, one of Southeast Asia's first major states. And it rewrote everything. Because up until that moment, historians believed Indian influence in Cambodia came through trade, art, and religion. But this DNA told a deeper story of people, not just ideas of migration, not just goods, of marriages, families, and shared bloodlines between ancient South Indians and early Cambodians. She wasn't a visitor. She was a daughter of two worlds, 
and her very existence proved that global connection had reached Cambodia centuries before many believed it possible. And if one such burial existed, how many more remain undiscovered? Before the temples, before the kings, there were families, and their stories are still written in our blood. For decades, scientists believed Cambodia was a crossroads, a place where migrants passed through, where empires flowed in and out. But new genetic evidence suggests something far more surprising. Cambodia wasn't just a receiver. It was a source. Deep analysis of ancient genomes reveals that certain lineages found across Southeast Asia, and even parts of Oceania, may have originated in or radiated out from Cambodia, rather than being a forgotten corner of prehistory. This region may have served as a dispersal hub, launching early populations into Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and beyond. The reason? Geography. Cambodia is a natural cradle, with rivers that fed inland routes, coastlines that opened to the sea, and fertile plains that could support large, stable populations. In a time when human movement was driven by survival, Cambodia gave people a reason to stay and a path to move. Even today, Cambodians carry genetic fingerprints found in distant Austroasiatic communities, from tribal groups in India to hill peoples in Laos. These aren't just similarities. They're clues. Clues that Cambodia may have helped seed the genetic landscape of an entire region. What if your ancestors weren't just shaped by history, but helped shape the genetics of half a continent? Empires rise. Empires fall. But DNA endures. Cambodia has known the heights of glory and the depths of colonization. The Khmer Empire once ruled over vast swaths of Southeast Asia, leaving behind architectural marvels like Angkor Wat. And yet... Even its grandeur was temporary. Foreign invasions, centuries of colonization, and modern political trauma have tested the Cambodian people again and again. And still, their genome tells a story of remarkable continuity. Genetic studies show that despite waves of cultural transformation, Cambodia's core ancestral signature, a blend of ancient Hoabinian and Austroasiatic DNA, remains dominant, especially in rural communities. Colonization may have changed names, languages, and borders, but it didn't rewrite bloodlines. Even as new genetic influences entered from India, China, France, the foundation remained rooted. Where other regions show sweeping genomic turnover after colonial contact, Cambodia's deep ancestry persisted beneath the surface, like bedrock under shifting soil. That resilience isn't just biological, it's historical, it's cultural. It's the story of a people who adapted without erasing their past. You can take the land. You can change the map. But the DNA, the DNA remembers. For most people, identity is shaped by language, culture, maybe a family tree. But in Cambodia, identity runs deeper into the cells, the chromosomes, the silent legacy carried in every heartbeat. Modern Cambodians walk with the memory of thousands of years inside them. From Ice Age foragers to Neolithic farmers, from South Indian seafarers to Khmer queens, their DNA is not a relic. It's a living library. That discovery matters, not just scientifically, but personally. Because for centuries, Cambodian identity was narrowed by history books, politics, and pain. Colonial powers tried to reshape it. War tried to erase it. And yet, the genome refused to forget. Today, as scientists uncover these ancient lineages, Cambodians are reclaiming something that was always theirs, the right to know where they come from, and to be proud of the complexity that shaped them. And it's not just about Cambodia. Their DNA carries connections to people across Asia, and even to distant corners of the globe. In a world obsessed with borders, Cambodia's genome is a quiet reminder that our histories are shared, and our origins far more intertwined than we think. Who we are is never just one thing. And in Cambodia's case, it's everything. Ancient, mixed, resilient, and still unfolding. Cambodian DNA isn't just unique, it's sacred. Not in the religious sense, but in the way it holds stories that no scroll, monument, or empire ever could. It is one of the oldest surviving genetic mosaics on Earth. Crafted by migrations that predate civilization, shaped by empires, and tested by centuries of change. From Hoabinian foragers to Indian voyagers, from the rise of Funan to the legacy of Angkor, 
Every chapter has been quietly written into the body of a people who refused to be forgotten. And now, with every ancient burial unearthed, every genome sequenced, a new sentence is added to the story. A story not just of Cambodia, but of all humanity. Because in the end, DNA doesn't lie. It doesn't follow borders. It doesn't bow to politics. It remembers. Maybe the real power of Cambodian DNA isn't just how unique it is, but how deeply it connects us all. If this story changed how you see identity, hit the like button, share it forward, and drop a comment. What part of your DNA would you want to understand more deeply?